how does the ice industry look like for uh, in the future? Uh, well, I don't think there will be an ice industry long term. Hey, I'm Stephen, and this is solving the money problem. If you're new, welcome. If you're not, welcome back. In this video, we're going to be hearing from Elon Musk and others at Tesla discussing their plans in the future, potentially to supply battery cells to other auto manufacturers, perhaps other companies in general, even in other industries, and also what needs to be done to help accelerate the transition to sustainable energy. Because as Tesla has said in the past, they alone cannot do this. It's going to be a group collective effort. And also this means that the opportunity in front of us is absolutely enormous. Anybody getting into battery storage, solar, electric vehicles etc is looking at an enormous expanding market over the next decade the opportunity is phenomenal so let's get into the video but first hey guys if you're in the US and you'd like to help out the channel and get a free stock check out the link in the description to Webull if you open a new account and fund it with $100 you'll get a free stock valued up to $1600 and if you're in Australia the UK or New Zealand you can get a free stock with stake also using the link in the description let's get back to it and let me know in the comments below if you've been buying selling shorting or just holding Tesla stock over the last few weeks it's always fascinating to know what you guys are up to and there seems to be a pretty strong trend where you're doing the exact opposite of the overall market which so far seems to be working out pretty well so bravo let's get into it we, we can try to like basically uh overdo it in cell production and perhaps supply cells to others but uh we do see the fundamental fundamental constraint as total cell production that's why we're putting so much effort into making cells and kind of reinventing uh trying to reinvent every aspect of cell production from mining the ore to a, a complete battery pack um, because it's the fundamental constraint. It's, it's, no, we're not getting into the cell business because we, you know, just for the hell of it, it's because it's the fundamental constraint. It's the thing that is uh, the limiting factor for rapid growth. But uh, we, we could certainly try to overdo it on cell production and perhaps uh, sell cells to others. Although we are going at absolute top speed, so it's like, it's not like we're holding it back. I've been speculating for months that in the future, when Tesla builds their own battery cells, they will be open to supplying those to other automotive manufacturers and potentially other companies in completely unrelated industries, providing that they can generate more than enough supply to meet their own demands. And now Elon has stated this in no uncertain terms. This is incredibly important for two key reasons. The first of which, just from a place of pure honesty and deductive reasoning. Tesla has the biggest brain engineers of any company on the planet, except maybe SpaceX. Literally, the engineering students who are graduating, they've been surveying them for years now. The number one and number two employer that they most want to work for are SpaceX and Tesla. So they've got the pick of the bunch of the best engineers. That means that in aggregate, Nobody is as smart as Tesla, and they're working on extremely difficult problems. So what's the point of even trying? And I'm not out here to disparage companies from developing new battery technology. But look, if we look at this from a bird's eye perspective and think about this rationally and reasonably, all of the best engineers are working for Tesla. All of the best engineers want to work for Tesla in the future. Who even has a hope in hell of catching up to Tesla? Answer, nobody. So what do you do? Well, you can either go bankrupt or you can try to buy battery cells from Tesla and just concentrate on the things that don't matter so much as this fundamental core piece of technology. And as a Tesla shareholder, remember, I'm pretty much all in on Tesla stock. This is extremely positive for future earnings. There could be potentially billions, billions of dollars of profit coming from the sale of batteries to other automakers, other companies developing stationary storage, etc. Now, I'm not saying that Tesla's gonna take 100% of the world's battery supply market, but let's just imagine, just pull a number out of my ass, hang on. All right, let's just say Tesla gets 25% of the global EV market. I know that's a lot, calm the f down, it's just an example, calm down. Okay, good, great. Let's just say that they get 25% of the EV market. Let's just imagine a crazy, crazy example. I know, again, just a number, calm down, it's just a number, it's an example. Imagine they get another 25% of the EV market battery supply. So in total, let's just say Tesla's producing a quarter of all the EVs, and then on top of that, they're producing another quarter of all the batteries. Therefore, Tesla batteries are powering Teslas or other vehicles accounting for half of the global EV market. This is just an example, but you guys can start to see the potential here in terms of producing billions of dollars of future profits and accelerating their mission further is phenomenal. Remember, Tesla's mission is to accelerate the world's transition to sustainable energy. This aligns with their mission. They will have the best battery cells. It will make logical financial sense for others to buy cells from Tesla. So why wouldn't they? The only reason they won't is if Tesla can't make enough for their own needs. And I'm sure, even if Elon Musk like, oh yeah, we're open to it. 
I'm sure that his goal is to produce as many fucking battery cells as humanly possible, as fast as possible. So either Tesla screws up completely, or at some point in the future, they have far more cells than they can possibly put into their own products. And then of course, they're gonna supply those to others. The only question I have is when will they begin supplying batteries to other automakers? Let me know your guesses in the comments below. How long? Three years, five years, seven years, 10 years? If, we're, if we have, um if we're able to make enough cells, we, which we'll try to do, or we will supply other companies. It's definitely not an intentional effort to keep the cells to ourselves. If we can make enough for other companies, we'll we will supply them. And we're trying to do, you know, the right thing for advancing the sustainable energy, whatever that 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 is. There's a lot of investors out there that don't really understand Tesla's mission. Fundamentally, their goal, their mission is to accelerate the world's transition to sustainable energy. And they're people of their word. This isn't hyperbole. This isn't horse This isn't corporate BS. This is actually what's driving the company. We can see this by the fact that in 2014, Tesla opened all their patents for anyone to use to help accelerate the mission. And again, Elon isn't talking about, oh no, we don't want to do that. We'll lose our competitive advantage. No, no, no. If you ever wonder, what are some potential things Tesla may do in the future? Go back to their mission and think. I know it hurts sometimes to think, fire up the gray matter. I know it's uncomfortable, but hey, if you reason your way through this, just based on Tesla's mission, you can deduce quite a bit. Like the fact that Tesla will, in the future, supply battery cells to other automakers. And yes, wait for it, here it comes. They will, yes, will supply or license full self-driving software to other automakers. Because once again, they're gonna solve autonomy first. Now, imagine you're a competing automaker and you've got a vehicle that's 10 times, 20 times, 30 times more likely to kill its occupants or somebody else on the road because it doesn't have Tesla's autopilot software. What are you gonna do? I mean, honestly, what are you gonna do? You're just gonna keep making cars that are like 30 times as likely to kill people? Or do you go, hey Tesla, what's up dude? Um, we'd like to stop killing so many people in our vehicles. Can we please get your tech? And Elon, what do you think he's gonna do? The fundamental design requirement of every Tesla vehicle, number one priority has always been safety. Always. This is why Tesla doesn't make motorcycles or three-wheeled vehicles. They will not make death machines. So what do you think Elon's going to do in a couple of years' time when no one else has solved autonomy and Tesla has? They're going to license this to other automakers, despite the fact that this might give them a competitive disadvantage by giving away this core technology plus selling their battery cells. Again, first principles, reason. What's Tesla's mission? What do they care about? What do they focus on? Tesla's goal fundamentally is to do good in the world. Saving lives and transitioning the world to sustainable energy is doing good in this world. It doesn't matter whether this involves licensing or selling some of your tech to other companies who will compete with you. It does not matter. The mission takes priority. It is a absolutely monumental task to accelerate the advent of sustainable energy. I mean, the entire global economy is still more than 99% dependent on, or quote, roughly 99% dependent on fossil fuels. So although electric cars kind of get a lot of press right now, there's still very few, as a percentage of the total global fleet, is practically nothing. It's, I would say, yes, less than 1% of the global fleet is electric right now, because you know, of two, 2 billion cars and trucks and whatnot in use. So there's a massive amount of work ahead. And that massive amount of work is a massive business opportunity. And as I've said 400 trillion times in the past, Tesla has won the decade. This is why I'm pouring every spare cent that I have still into this company, because we're a tiny speck of what the industry will grow into in the future. And Tesla is already in a dominant position and moving faster than everyone else. Just, in, just insane, like hard to comprehend how much work is ahead to uh, get the new vehicle production to be sustainable, to um, massively increase the amount of stationary storage, which is critical because renewable energy is, is intermittent. Uh, wind and solar is, is intermittent. Sometimes the wind doesn't blow and, some, and this obviously sun doesn't shine at night. So you, you gotta have batteries, a massive, massive number of batteries. This is another reason I'm so excited about Tesla as an investment opportunity. Everyone is still asleep on Tesla Energy at this point because it's such an infinitesimally tiny little speck on their balance sheet that nobody's giving it any consideration. But it's not about what they're doing today. It's about the future. Everyone is going to be using energy stored on batteries generated from renewable sources in the future. Okay, one more time. Everybody is going to be using energy that has been stored in battery storage that has been generated by renewable sources in the future. Who do you think is in prime position to get an outsized chunk of the battery storage market? 
So there's a lot of companies in China that I think are doing great work with electric vehicles and also with stationary storage. Although we don't see that much in the U.S. yet, but I think probably we will in the future. I don't know. I, I mean, obviously, we're doing everything we can to encourage other companies to move to uh, sustainable transport and also, you know, m make stationary storage batteries. You know, we opened up, uh, made our patents freely available. You know, we really try to tell these companies, hey, you really need to do this or you won't exist in the future. But they don't believe it, you know. <laughs> What's the common thread, the common denominator between these stock analysts, and I use the term exceedingly loosely, who think Tesla has no future, there's no EV market, it's such an insignificant portion of the overall vehicle market, it's never going to grow, blah, 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 they're worried there's demand problems, etc. They think Tesla will never sell 500,000 vehicles in 2020. Then they do. Now they think, oh, they'll never sell a million in 2022. They will. These kind of people and the internal combustion engine vehicle companies that are still making internal combustion engine vehicles and haven't been transitioning to EVs at full throttle for the last 10 years, I'll tell you the common thread. They don't know what the f*** they're doing. They don't know what the f*** the future's going to look like. And they're either going to go broke, investing in dying industries and not seeing the opportunity in Tesla. Or if they're a legacy automaker, they're going bankrupt because, again, they couldn't see into the future and couldn't see what was bleedingly obvious. So, I mean, we've... We've talked until we're blue in the face. Uh, what, what are we supposed to do? But we really are hopeful that other companies will also uh, do what we're doing and that will make the a sustainable future come sooner. Really the goal that we were trying to present here was a model for vertical integration, strategic vertical integration that a lot of different people can do. What, what, what we need to see is vertical integration that shortens the, the process path from mine to cathode. And you know what we're doing here is 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 novel, and we're we're trying to push the industry in that direction. So you know we're we're presenting a model here that that anyone can can follow. This is essentially Tesla's third secret master plan. The first one: make an expensive, low volume performance EV, then use those funds to make a more affordable one. Use those funds to make a more affordable one. The next master plan: now we'll solve autonomy, so those vehicles can go out and earn revenue for the owners without them actually being in the vehicle, and we'll also make solar and many other things. This is the third master plan. And how many companies have followed in Tesla's footsteps? Not many. I really hope these guys are listening and paying attention because if not, they're all going bankrupt, and that's not good. We need other companies to be doing this as well. Tesla can't do it alone. Less than one percent of the global automotive fleet has been converted to electric, and even to maybe point one, less than point one percent of stationary storage has been done. So stationary storage has barely begun. Converting the global vehicle fleet to electric has barely begun. So there's still a massive amount of engineering work to be done at Tesla and, and other companies to uh, accelerate this transition to sustainability. But I, I think like uh, just making really efficient cars, you know, that are, have low drag coefficient, low re loading resist, low uh, rolling resistance, uh, efficient powertrains. I mean, that's kind of what we've done in order to make uh, iron phosphate still have a, a, a good range. So the iron phosphate is Face phosphate low, lower energy density a solution, but there's um, you know while there are some limitations on the total amount of nickel produced every year, there's really no limit on the iron. There's so much iron, it's ridiculous. So you can really scale up iron phosphate, you know, f at a raw materials basis, faster more than you can nickel. This is a very important point as well. Tesla is now using multiple battery cell chemistries depending on the needs of the product. So for example, stationary storage. Robo taxi vehicles, that's going to be high cycle life. You don't need a huge amount of energy and power. What you do need is a long cycle life, something that can last for years and years and years, either a robo taxi to a million miles plus or stationary battery storage that can last multiple decades. Naturally, the lower the energy density of a battery, the less range your vehicle is going to get per battery cell. However, if you're able to improve the powertrain efficiency, the aerodynamics, etc., you can get more out of those same lower quality, lower performance batteries, which is a massive win. The prices come down and the performance continues to increase. And this is what Tesla's really aiming to do with their iron-based batteries. They'll be sufficient to go in cars. Sure, you're probably not going to see an iron-based battery in the Tesla Roadster, but Tesla's going to continue to grind out and find new efficiencies, delete parts, remove weight, and get more out of less. As we go to a more autonomous future, the importance of entertainment um, and productivity will become greater and greater. I mean, to the degree that if, if you're just basically sitting in your car, the car is fully autonomous and driving somewhere, it's kind of like being in, in a, you know, the car is essentially your chauffeur. And then uh, the things that become important are, okay, well, let's, uh, let's have good entertainment. And uh, you know, if you want to do some productivity stuff, then that, that actually starts to become much more important because you're no longer spending your attention driving the car. So it will be extremely important in the future.
If you have any doubts as to the future potential revenue opportunity for Tesla's software in vehicles once autonomy is sold, you simply haven't taken the time to think your way through this. When you no longer need to pay attention to the road and drive the vehicle, the screen becomes everything. Tesla is going to do hundreds of millions, billions of dollars of future high margin, almost pure profit software revenue on entertainment, information, productivity and more. The opportunities before Tesla are colossal and people seem to be missing the implications here. The battery storage market is just getting started. The EV market is just getting started. The software revenue component is just getting started and the battery cell supplier business hasn't even started. Mark my words guys, the 2030s are going to be a phenomenal decade of unbelievable growth for Tesla. There's a reason that I'm all in on the stock. I'm Stephen Mark Ryan. This is Solving the Money Problem, and I love you all. And don't forget your free stocks with Webull and Stake using the links below. Deposit $100 in your Webull account, you'll get a free stock valued up to $1,600. And Stake, spin the rule at will, you'll either get Nike, GoPro, or Dropbox. Thanks so much for watching. Let me know your thoughts in the comments below. And of course, if you have any ideas for future videos, let me know. I read all your comments. P.S. If you're still watching, you're awesome. If you'd like early access, exclusive videos, regular Q&As, our private Discord server, and more, consider supporting the channel at patreon.com slash solving the money problem so I can keep creating content for you guys. There's a link in the description. You can now also become a member of the channel for some exclusive perks. To learn more, click the join button next to subscribe. And don't forget to check out our merch store. Either way, the best form of support is you being here and watching, so thanks again.